Let's say you've decided that you want to try to do a school visit. Perhaps you're already published as an author or self-published as an author. Perhaps you're just testing a manuscript and you want to see what the reaction of a group of kids would be to your story. Once you have secured an author visit, once you have found a school where you'll be welcomed into the classroom and it may be that your kids teacher would love to have you in or maybe you've had an official invitation from a school, you are presented with one of the joys and terrors of being an author of books for children. You get to go in and you get to talk to a classroom or maybe three or four classrooms or maybe the whole school of kids about your work. Here are my three tips to make sure that your author visit is as successful as it can be. My first tip is to prepare. Make sure you know how many kids are going to be in the group. Make sure you know how old those kids are going to be. Make sure you know what the school is expecting. Don't show up with a writing workshop, expecting all the kids to have pens and paper, if in fact they're hoping for a reading and a question and answer session. Make sure you know how long your talk has to be, how much of it is going to be question and answer or writing on behalf of the children, how much needs to be done by you and how much the teachers want the kids to be a part of what you're doing. Find out as well if there's going to be a possibility for an audio visual component because if there is the possibility of that then I would suggest that your preparation really does involve making a really strong audio visual presentation. Kids love that stuff. It makes it so much easier to talk to a group of children if you are prepared and if you have slides to back you up. It is not difficult to use Keynote or whatever the other versions are of software. I use Keynote so it works for me. It's not difficult to make something really fantastic that makes kids feel that like you've put in the effort so that their attention is fully upon you while you're speaking. My second tip is to remember that not every kid in that classroom is going to be interested and that is okay. Make sure you neither feel offended by the kids who aren't interested, nor do you worry too much about trying to engage those kids. Maybe that kid's just going through a really bad day. It may be that the kid who's texting or staring out the window or talking is just never going to be interested in what you have to say. Conversely, it may be that that is the kid who most needs to hear what you have to say. But try not to let it pull you off what you're trying to do. Be yourself, be open, be honest, say what you have to say, and try not to let yourself be thrown off by the distractions that happen in a day-to-day -day classroom environment. My third and my final tip is to make yourself available outside of the classroom too. So if you go in to do an author visit, make yourself available afterwards for teachers to be able to follow up. Direct them to your website where maybe you have workshops and ideas for kids to carry on so that they can take what they've done in the short session they have with you and then go a little further with their writing or with their reading. It's important to make sure that you draw the line so if kids are writing to you tons and tons your answers are clear and firm and not trying to lead them off into a new space which is unhelpful for them but it's also important to be able to answer questions for kids so that, that they know that you're there and that you're interested and engaged and ready to talk about your writing and the stories you want to tell. Kids and teenagers are some of the best readers I know. When they love a book, they adore it. When they hate a book, they certainly let an author know. Being available to hear what your readers have to say about your work, to take what's being said and use it to make your next story even stronger, I think is really a great part of the job. So I hope you've enjoyed these three tips. Do sign up for my newsletter if you want to hear more about me and my writing and if you want more tips just for you about how to make writing part of your life too.